Hey, it's December. Time to throw a log on the fire and slow roast a whole pan of micro jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. You have a few different options when you need to cut a hole. What you choose depends upon how big you need the diameter, how clean you need the cut, and how much you want to spend. One of the simplest methods for cutting a hole any size is to use a jigsaw. The drawback here is that the saw can drift while you're cutting and getting a perfect circle is nearly impossible. And the result might be good enough depending on what you're building. But in this video, I want to focus on methods that will produce a perfect circle. Hey guys, before I get started, I wanted to remind you that the Weekend Woodworker will be relaunching next month. and. I want to give you a sneak peek. One of the first projects you'll build in my online course is the BMW, the basic mobile workbench. It's a sturdy, versatile workbench that's easy to stow away. Go to the weekendwoodworker.com slash BMW to download a free set of plans and build one now. And as a bonus, you get a video walkthrough to give you an idea of what to expect in the course. Probably the least expensive way to bore a hole is to use a spade or paddle bit. These are mostly used in rough construction projects where the quality of the cut isn't that critical, say drilling holes through wall studs to run electrical wire. That said, you might be surprised how clean they cut holes in solid lumber as long as you drill slowly and use a backer board. In fact, the cuts I get with them often rival the quality of a Forstner bit. Even in plywood, you might get pretty good results with minimal chip out. One drawback to using spade bits is that they aren't available for making really large holes. I think the biggest diameter I normally see is about an inch and a half, but a set of spade bits is cheap and I think it's worth having a set in the shop. A big jump in quality is the Forstner bit. These are definitely the best choice for woodworking projects. They bore super clean cuts with minimal tear out. And since they produce a flat bottom, they can be useful if you only need to drill halfway through a board. And you can find them in larger diameters than spade bits. I've seen them up to four inches and you can probably find even bigger ones. Of course, the biggest drawback to using Forstner bits is their cost, depending on what brand you buy, they can be very expensive. I recommend getting a multi-bit kit. I bought this kit at Costco for $50 about 15 years ago and I still get great results with them. And I just saw a 16 piece set on Amazon for a little less than $50. If you're a weekend woodworker, an affordable set will work fine. Hole saws are available in even larger diameters than Forstner bits, and they can be a little bit cheaper. Unlike spade and Forstner bits, they cut out plugs rather than bore holes, so you get wheels at the same time. As with the spade and Forstner bits, you'll have the best results if you're using a drill press. If you don't have one, just be sure to clamp your workpiece down. It'll be impossible to hold it by hand. Drill slowly, raising the saw up and down to clear out the sawdust. If the saw stops cutting, check to see if the teeth are clogged. Of the three, the hole saw is definitely the worst cut. There's burning on the inside and it's a little bit more raggedy around the edges. All three of those previous techniques rely on having to buy a special bit or saw for each size hole you need to cut. This can get pricey. And what if you need to cut a really large hole, say 10 inches in diameter? All you need is one tool, a router. This is a great way to make small or large holes. The main drawback is that the setup time takes a little bit longer than the other methods. Remove the base of your router and replace it with a scrap plywood board. Attach your oversized workpiece and a scrap board to your workbench so they don't move around. With a straight bit in your router, measure out the radius of the hole you wanna make. I'll make this one, let's make a six inch hole. 
and drill a hole through the base. Now I'll screw this down where I want my circle to be. I'm not gonna screw this down really tight because it still needs to turn. If you have a plunge router, just lower the bit down into the wood. In my case, I'll just slide it down manually. Hey guys, before you go, I'd appreciate it if you'd hang around a little bit longer to support the sponsor of this video, Casper. Amazing Casper packs you never knew, but probably did. Casper mattresses are designed for humans, so they soothe and cradle your natural geometry. With other mattresses, you just don't know who or what they were designed for. Probably robots. Probably designed by cold, heartless robots. Robots that, that don't need soothing and cradling. Casper mattresses are designed, developed, and assembled in the US. Hey, I live in the US, so yeah, basically, I developed this technology. Casper now has three mattress models, the original Casper, the Wave, and the Essential. And it's rumored that they're working on the, oh my God, I never want to get out of bed again mattress. Casper's not just a mattress company, they offer all kinds of other stuff to ensure a better sleep experience. And they sell doggy beds. But come on, Casper, don't you think it's time to include our feline friends? You spend one third of your life sleeping, so you ought to be comfortable. Hey, bonus fun fact, one eighth of your life is spent trying to find that thing that was just in your hand a minute ago. <laughs> Am I right, woodworkers? Hey, I want you to start sleeping ahead of the curve with Casper. Get $50 towards any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash WWMM and using the promo code WWMM at checkout. Hey guys, I hope this video was helpful. Like everything else in woodworking, there are options for every task. Mostly, I wanna emphasize that you can accomplish just about any woodworking goal with modest tools. My advice is always to buy a new tool or upgrade what you have only when you simply can't accomplish something with what you have. I believe the joy of woodworking comes more from spending time in the shop making things rather than spending money shopping. Thanks for watching everybody.